kids, how are you? I am so glad that we're all here in Grace Kids, and it's a good thing that you're joining us this month because we're finding out how we can hang in there when life gets tough. How can we hold on when we feel like we're slipping? How can we live our lives with grit? Now, grit is refusing to give up even when life gets hard. You know, look, life can get tough sometimes, but we can't give up. And as a matter of fact, that's what the Apostle Paul wrote in our memory verse for this month. Do you remember what it is? Galatians 6, 9. Let us not become tired of doing good at the right time. We will gather a crop if we don't give up. Now, I love that verse because it means all of our hard work, all of that holding on, all of that trusting in God, it'll be worth it in the end. You know, when you're climbing a rock wall, you can't just give up halfway and stay stuck there on the rock face. You either have to have grit and keep moving forward, or you can rappel down to the bottom and get ready to climb again another day. But you know what I want right now? I want you to go ahead and get up on your feet because we know that even when life gets tough, we can always trust God. God is always faithful. God is always true. So come on, let's have some fun as we worship God together with this song. job singing out kids and right now I want us just to take a moment and pause and let's bow our heads for a word of prayer and then we're going to sing another worship song have a quick game and then we're going to dive right into the lesson all right 
Let's bow our heads for prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the day. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for loving us enough that you sent your one and only son to die on the cross for our sins so that one day we could place our faith in you and have that forever relationship with you so that we could live with you for eternity in heaven, that you would forgive our sins, that uh, you would restore that, our relationship with you. Um, God, there's just so many things that we could talk about in this prayer that we're grateful for. But God, we love you and thank you for making it possible for us to have salvation. And uh, God, we're grateful for that. And maybe today there's a boy or girl that's watching online and they do not understand what that means to have a faith relationship with you. Maybe today their heart will be uh, challenged a little bit and maybe they'll go talk to mom or dad about it or maybe talk to us on the weekend about it. Or perhaps they have been discussing this some with their parents and they're still just a little bit on the fence of whether or not this is what they need. And so today I pray they'll make that decision to follow you, to give you their heart and to follow after you. So um, God, that's our prayer today with this lesson. I need your help, God. I need your words uh, so that I can clearly communicate the importance of grit to just learn how to hold on even when life gets tough. And uh, cause we know it does get tough. Uh, but we know we can trust you no matter what. So I pray that you'll help us and give us your words today. Um, God, help the boys and girls to sit up and listen and uh, not just remember it for a few minutes after the lesson, but they'll really get it, that it'll just, uh, uh, Lord, make an impression on their hearts, that this will lay a great foundation for them to build their life on, founded on your word and your principles. So we ask this in your name. Amen. You know what, kids? I love the words from Psalm 106, verse 1. It says, praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good. His faithful love continues forever. You know, when we worship God, we remember all that he's done, and we respond by lifting our voices in praise. So our faithful God well, he deserves every song that we could ever sing. So let's thank God now as we sing one more song. Then, like I said, we'll have one fun game, and then we're going to dive into the lesson. So here we go. Let's sing some praise to God one more time.
y'all are here. I've been pumpkin carving all day. And now there's pumpkin gunk all over the place. I don't know where nothing is because it's all buried in pumpkin gunk. Uh, think you could give me a hint? Uh, I'll start wiping away the gunk and you try to figure out what's underneath. When you think you know what's there, stand up and shout out the answer. Oh, we got to move fast, though, if we're going to get this place cleaned up before my sweet wifey comes home. So, we've only got about ten seconds for each section. You ready? Let's start over here. All right. What is that underneath all of the pumpkin gunk? Time's up. What is it? It's a football! No, uh, that reminds me. Do you know why the football coach went to the bank? He went to get his quarterback! <laughs> okay, <laughs> we've got lots more to do. What could be over here under this gun? Time's up! What is it? No oh, why, it's a pencil! <laughs> hey, what do you call a pencil with two erasers? Pointless! <laughs> oh, no, I, I, I wonder what's under all this pumpkin gunk. What is it? It's a pair of cowboy boots! Oh, those are my favorite shoes! Do you know which of my shoes are the laziest? My loafers! <laughs> we, we've got some more gunk over here. 
What's that beneath it? Time's up. What is it? It's a book! You know, right now, I'm reading a book about anti-gravity. I can't put it down! <laughs> oh, and what do you think is under all that gunk? What is it? Why, it's the sink! Did you hear what the sink said to the toilet? You look flushed! <laughs> oh, what? I don't remember what I left here in the kitchen. What could it be? Time's up! What is it? It's a pumpkin! That was a hard one. No, oh, by the way, <laughs> how do you fix a broken pumpkin? With a pumpkin patch! Oh, no, oh, the place is almost clean. Just this one last section to go. Can you figure out what's under the gunk? Time's up! What is it? Well, there's my goldfish, Henrietta. Oh, well, uh, thanks for helping clean up all the pumpkin gunk. And for laughing at my corny jokes. I know they don't always tickle everyone's funny bone, even though they are humorous. <laughs> Kids, again, it's great to be with you here as we continue God's big story together. Now look, if you were here last week, you remember that we met a little baby boy named Moses, and we'll find out what happened next with Moses in just a minute. But first, let's recap where we've been so far. See, in the beginning, God made everything, including people. See, Adam and Eve, unfortunately, they disobeyed God, and their relationship with God was broken. But, but God began a great rescue plan with a couple of people named Abraham and Sarah. See, God promised to bless the whole world through Abraham and Sarah's family. Well, during the time of Abraham and Sarah's great-grandson, Joseph, Abraham and Sarah's descendants, the Israelites, they moved to Egypt in order to find food. Well, over time, the Israelite families kept growing and growing, and the Egyptian pharaoh, well, he was worried that they might turn against him. So, he decided to enslave them, and the Egyptians, well, they treated the Israelites very harshly. And they made them work really, really hard. And the Israelites, well, they cried out to God for help. And you know what? God heard the cries of the people and chose someone to help them. Can you guess who? Yes, an Israelite man named Moses. That's right. That little baby boy that we talked about last week was all grown up. And Moses grew up in Pharaoh's palace. But when he saw how badly the Israelite people were being treated, well, he got really angry. And he ran away from the palace and became a shepherd in a land called Midian. And that's where we'll pick things up today. Now listen, we're not covering all the details in this story, but we're teaching you some of the highlights of this, some of the main points, okay? So parents, if you're watching with your kids, you can pick up some of the details in between this, all right? But for now, we're just kind of going through some of the highlight moments, all right? So again, Moses ran away from the palace and became a shepherd in a land called Midian, and that's where we're picking up today. At this point, Moses, well, he was a lot older. He was 
probably around 80 years old. And one day he was taking care of a sheep when he saw a burning bush. Now that may not sound like a big deal, but it was a little different. It was a very strange sight because no matter how long the bush burned, it didn't burn up. It just kept on burning. Well, of course, Moses was really curious, so he went to investigate. And when Moses got close, he heard a voice coming out of the bush calling his name. Moses, Moses. It was the voice of God. God said to Moses, and we find this in Exodus chapter 3, verse 5. And we pick it up there. It says, do not come any closer. Take off your sandals. The place you are standing, it's holy ground. I am the God of your father. I am the God of Abraham. I'm the God of Isaac. And I am the God of Jacob. I've seen how the people are suffering in Egypt. I've heard them cry out because of their slave drivers. I'm concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to save them from the Egyptians. I will bring them up out of that land. I will bring them into a good land. It has a lot of room. It has a land that has plenty of milk and honey. So now go. I'm sending you to Pharaoh. I want you to bring the Israelites out of Egypt. They are my people. Wow. See, God had seen and heard what the Israelites were going through and how badly they were being treated. God wanted Moses to help them. Well, of course, Moses had been adopted by the Pharaoh's daughter when he lived in Egypt. But Moses didn't know how or didn't know who the new Pharaoh was now. So not to mention, Moses was raised in the palace. Would the other Hebrew people even want his help? And who was he to do such a huge and important job? Needless to say, Moses was pretty nervous. So Moses talked to God about it. And he promised, God promised to be with Moses. I mean, God said, look, I'll be with you. But Moses naturally was still scared. I mean, I would have been too. So Moses asked God, what would happen if the people didn't believe that God had sent him? Well, God responded by giving Moses a sign. See, God told Moses, he says, look, see that stick? Pick it up. Here's your walking stick. Matter of fact, take your walking stick. Throw it on the ground. So Moses did. And you know what happened? It turned into a snake. Yikes! And when Moses picked up the snake, it turned back into his walking stick. Wow! But even with this miracle and two other miracles that God did and showed Moses, Moses was still scared. Moses told God that he wasn't that good at speaking and he thought he might mess up. He begged God to send someone who would be better at speaking. So God told Moses that his brother Aaron would speak to the people for him. So Moses and his brother Aaron, they traveled back to Egypt together with Aaron's help. Moses spoke to the Israelite people to tell them what God had promised. Moses had explained that God would tell, lead them out of Egypt and give them a better land. And the Israelites believed Moses and they worshiped God. Then Moses and Aaron, well, they went to speak to the Pharaoh, the leader of all Egypt. And they said to him in Exodus, Exodus chapter 5, verse 1, The Lord is the God of Israel and he says, Let my people go. <laughs> but Pharaoh, he refused. Instead, he said, who is the Lord and why should I obey him? Why should I let Israel go? I don't even know the Lord and I won't let Israel go. Instead of release, releasing the Israelites, well, Pharaoh made them work harder. Well, as you can imagine, this made the Israelite people mad at Moses and Aaron for angering Pharaoh and making things worse for them. They didn't understand yet that it was all part of God's plan. Well, later, Aaron performed the miracle for the Pharaoh that God had shown Moses. See, he threw his stick down on the ground and it turned into a snake. But Pharaoh still wouldn't let the people go. 
So the next day, Moses and Aaron met the Pharaoh down by the Nile River. Aaron struck the Nile as God had instructed him to do, and all the water in Egypt turned to blood. Still, Pharaoh was stubborn and he wouldn't let the Israelites go. Over and over again, Moses demanded that Pharaoh let the people go. But over and over again, the Pharaoh said no. Then God sent a series of plagues. There were frogs and gnats and flies and boils all over their skin. There was hailstorms and locusts that destroyed the crops. And all the livestock animals, they died so there was no food. Then there was complete darkness for three whole days. Three, two, one. Still, the Pharaoh wouldn't set God's people free. Finally, Moses and Aaron, well, they went to see Pharaoh for the last time. Moses warned Pharaoh that all the firstborn sons of every household, even the Pharaoh's own son, would die. Even the firstborn male animals would die if Pharaoh did not set God's people free. See, God told Moses how to save the Israelite people. So if they painted the blood of a lamb over the door frames of their houses, then the plague would pass over their house and they would be safe. Well, Pharaoh sadly refused to listen, but later that night, when he saw what had happened and heard the cries of the people, yeah, they cried because a lot of, a lot of people died. He finally let the Israelites go. The Israelites packed up all of their belongings, took their flocks and herds in the middle of the night, and they left as quickly as they could. And after hundreds of years of being enslaved, God's people were finally free. God had heard their cries and plea for help and had rescued them. Now next week, we'll find out what happened as the Israelites left Egypt. But the important thing to remember for now is that whatever is happening in our lives, God knows what we're going through. When we face tough things, we're never alone. God's people were stuck in an awful situation. The Israelites, they had been enslaved for years and they cried out to God for help. God heard them and he sent Moses to help them. And in the end, God came through to free them. So. Here's what I want us to remember. Hold on because God knows what you're going through. Check out today's Story Lab video. Hey there, welcome to Story Lab. This week we're talking about grit while we take a look at the story of someone who met up with a pretty unusual bonfire. Oh, and don't miss this either. I'm Amaya. And I'm Zeke. And we're talking about grit, which is refusing to give up when life gets hard. You know what I think is hard? What? Not using your phone. I'm not using mine right now. You're gonna get that? It could be important. <laughs> oh, it's from you. <laughs> well, cell phones can be good. Right. I mean, you might be watching us on a phone right now. Yeah. You have an invitation to play Farm Builder. Ooh. I don't have to look at my phone. You know what? Me neither. I can go longer than you without a phone. Oh, you're on. <laughs> Let's do it! Yeah, I know. You know, I could be learning Spanish right now. I actually got this really awesome app. I... <clears throat> that might be your new game score.
That sounds like a lot of new likes, doesn't it? story. Today we're in the second book of the Old Testament, Exodus. God made a plan to bless the whole world through Abraham and Sarah's family. But their descendants, the Israelites, traveled to Egypt to escape starving. Over time, the Israelites were enslaved, but still, their families grew. After hundreds of years, the Hebrew people cried out to God for help. God heard them and chose an unlikely helper. A Hebrew man named Moses who had been raised in Pharaoh's palace, but ran away to live as a shepherd in Midian. Moses is where our story starts. Take it away. Greetings, everyone. There's fire, darkness, frogs, and a whole lot more in this story, so hold on tight. By the time our story starts, Moses was actually 80 years old. His early years in Pharaoh's palace were just a distant memory. He was living life as an ordinary shepherd until one day. Now, usually when something catches fire, it just burns up, but this bush, it didn't, it glowed like, like a flaming beacon. As Moses edged nearer, a voice called to him from the midst of the fire. Moses, Moses. Here I am. Don't come any closer. Take off your sandals. The place you are standing is holy ground. Moses' hands shook as he tugged off his sandals. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I have seen how my people are suffering in Egypt, so I have come down to save them. I will bring them to a good land. So now, go. I am sending you to Pharaoh. I want you to bring the Israelites out of Egypt. So many thoughts must have rushed through Moses' head. He had been raised in the palace by Pharaoh's daughter, but that Pharaoh had died and a new Pharaoh was in charge. Also, Moses had no idea if his own people would even accept him. But w what if the Israelites don't believe you sent me? Throw your walking stick on the ground. Okay, Moses did what he was told. Right then and there, God turned Moses' walking stick into a snake! And then back into a stick. Still, Moses was nervous. The bush continued to blaze. Lord, uh... I, I, I'm a terrible speaker in front of people. Go. I will help you speak. <laughs> Couldn't you send someone else? Your brother Aaron can speak well. He is already on his way to meet you. Tell him what to say. I will help both of you speak. Even though the thought of facing Pharaoh probably made him sick with fear, Moses did travel back to Egypt. Together, Aaron and Moses spoke to the Israelites. God has heard you. He will lead us out of Egypt. Yay! We just have to okay it with Pharaoh. Oh boy. Moses just probably wanted to run, but instead he made his way to the palace where he had grown up. With Aaron, he stood his ground before the new Pharaoh. Tell him that the Lord says, let my people go. Then they will hold a feast to honor me in the desert. Aaron repeated the words loudly and clearly, and Pharaoh glared down. Who is the Lord? Why should I obey him? Instead of releasing God's people, Pharaoh gave orders for them to work even harder. Now the Israelites were upset with Moses for making things worse. I did what you asked, and now it's just worse. You haven't saved your people at all. Pharaoh will not listen to you. So I will use my powerful hand against Egypt. I will bring the people of Israel out of Egypt. Even though God performed miraculous signs through Moses and Aaron in front of Pharaoh, he still would not listen. So the next morning, Aaron and Moses met Pharaoh down at the Nile River. Moses instructed Aaron what to say and do. The Lord has sent me to you. He says, let my people go. 
but you have not listened. Here is how you will know I am the Lord. Aaron raised his staff high. I will strike the water with this walking stick. The river will turn into blood. The fish will die, and no one will be able to drink the water. The water turned to dark red blood. But still, Pharaoh was stubborn. Ugh. Moses must have been just tempted to give up and go back to Midian, but God called him to speak to Pharaoh again and again. God says, let my people go. Over and over, Pharaoh promised to release God's people. And every single time, he went back on his word, even though God sent frogs, followed by gnats and flies. All the Egyptians' cattle died. Ugh. Terrible sores showed up all over the Egyptians and their animals. Hail rained down, destroying crops and tearing leaves from the trees. Ugh. Locusts finished off anything the hail left behind. Then, deep darkness descended across the whole land for three days. And at last came the most awful plague of all. The oldest son of every Egyptian family died. Only the Israelite families were saved by painting the blood of a lamb over their door frames, just as God had told them to do. When Pharaoh saw the terrible thing that had happened, he called Moses one last time. Get out of here, all of you. Just leave us alone. Go. Moses and Aaron gathered the people together. No time to bake your bread. Just uh, bring the dough along. The Israelites packed up in the middle of the night and left as quickly as they could, leading their flocks and herds. After hundreds of years, God's people were finally free. After so long, I bet they wanted to give up. Yeah, but they didn't. They kept going. They kept calling out to God. And Moses. I mean, if I were him, I definitely would have wanted to call it a day and leave. Yeah. Yeah, right? <laughs> but Moses held on. He had seen God's presence in the burning bush, and he knew that God saw what he was going through. And the Israelites, too. So, what's our part in the story? Well, when we face tough things, right, we can know that God sees us. God will help us through, even if it's, well, not in the way we expect. Yeah, like, maybe someone keeps being mean to you at school. I mean, that's awful. But you don't have to give up. You can talk to a grown-up about it, and you can trust that God will walk with you every step of the way. Or maybe you've got something that doesn't go away, like a food allergy. Oh yeah, that's a really hard one. But instead of giving up and grumbling, you can trust that God is with you and keep going. Yeah, God never intended us to keep going on our own. So God gave us Jesus to walk with us. And when we put our trust in Jesus, he gives us the power to keep going. Thanks, Brian. Yeah. See you next time. So here's the thing. Hold on because God knows what you're going through. And that's how you grow grit. You have two game invitations waiting. Are you going to get that? Nah. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. You really think you can solve that? Robot, I'm not you? smart enough for this. Come on, I'll show you. Oh. <laughs> what a story. I mean, think about what it must have been like for the Israelites way back then. They kept hoping and praying and calling out to God for help for hundreds of years. I'm sure there were times they wanted to just give up on God, but they held on and God was with them the whole time. God knew what they were going through and God also had a plan to save them. Moses had seen firsthand how God was with him when he saw the burning bush. See, as we've looked at God's big story timeline from creation, from Adam and Eve when they sinned and the relationship between God and man is now broken to Abraham and Sarah. And of course, we know Abraham and Sarah and all the kids and, and we've gone through Joseph and now Moses and now we're seeing how the Israelites are freed from the Egyptian slavery. See, God knew. He knew that Moses, he, he knew that God was with him. 
And when he and Aaron went to talk to the people, and when they went before the Pharaoh, they knew that God was with them. And God really understood what the Israelites were going through for all those years. And see, you and I, we can have that same confidence today that God sees us as well. So we can hold on because we know that God knows and sees what we're going through. And remember, God's rescue plan wasn't only to free the Israelites from being enslaved in Egypt. This was just the beginning. God's ultimate rescue plan was for all of us. See, God sent Jesus to rescue us from the consequences of our sin. When Jesus died on the cross, he paid the price for all the wrong things that we've done. And when we choose to follow Jesus and put our trust in him, well, he gives us the power that we need to keep going. And Jesus can even help us show grit to keep going through the things that we face each and every day. Like, like maybe you have trouble with math and all the numbers just get mixed up in your head. Or, or maybe you lose your temper really easily because you're super competitive. Well, those things won't just go away overnight, but you can always ask God to help you in any situation. And when we face tough things, well, we know that God sees us and knows what we're going through and God will help us. Even if it's not always the way that we expect, we can trust God no matter what. See, God is always there to help us. God puts amazing people in our lives to help us. So look, we need to wrap this up. So just, if you can't remember anything else, just remember that we can hold on because God knows what we're going through. And then our memory verse, Galatians 6, 9. Let us not become tired of doing good because at the right time, we'll gather a crop if we don't give up. Kids, again, that's all the time we've got for right now, but you know the routine. Right hand up in the air. High five. I'll see you soon. Have a great week.